Data science models can be really misleading and give you totally wrong answers if you don't know what you're doing. And just like these AI tools like ChatGPT, the models can appear very confident when they absolutely shouldn't be and are giving totally wrong answers. I'm going to show you how I know. I explained in a past video what a marketing mix model is. The idea is we are investing in all these advertising channels all at once, and we want to identify what the ROI is on these channels. So in this example, I generate data. So I know the exact relationship, the exact ROIs, because I'm defining them. The five channels are search, social, display, video, and affiliates. And you can see up here, I define exactly what the cost per booking is, the value per booking, and therefore the ROI. So I know exactly what the ROI is for each channel. But the spending in, the, in each of these channels will follow similar seasonal paths. That is, they're going to have multi-collinearity. In layman terms, it means when we're spending more in search, we're also spending more in social. And the model is going to have trouble distinguishing that. And additionally, we also have a statistical issue that we have to deal with called endogeneity because the bookings are going to follow a similar seasonal path using the sine curve. And therefore, we are going to be spending more in precisely those periods where demand is the highest. And I'm not cherry picking a bad example. This is literally how marketing usually works. Uh, I am in marketing data science. We tend to invest in channels uh, similarly across all the channels. That is, if we're spending a lot of money on TV, it's usually around the same season that we're spending a lot on search ads. And we're spending a lot on search ads at the same time there are, there's usually a lot of organic demand for the product. And this is just typical of most marketing companies where they tend to invest in marketing precisely at the periods where they expect demand to be the highest. Okay, so after I generate this data, you can see that baseline bookings, as I defined, is just about 10,000 uh, per week, or this is this is the level of observation is weekly data. And the uh, average conversions per week is 11,180. That means marketing is driving those additional 1,180. Specifically, baseline bookings are making up 89% of the bookings. These are what would occur even if there was no marketing. And our marketing expenses are driving just 11% of the bookings. And specifically, uh, we have social is driving 2.5%, video 2.8%, search is 2%, display is 1.8%, and affiliates is 1.4%. Again, this is data that we generated. This is the source of truth. And we are going to feed this data into the model and see how well it gets these values back. So yesterday's video, I gave an overview of Google's marketing mix model called Meridian and how it works. If you're unsure about it or you haven't seen that yet, you should go check it out. Otherwise, this is the output of the model that we have using the data that we created ourselves. So the first thing we notice is that the model fit metrics are a little worse than we saw in Google's simulated model where the mate was only 1%. In here, the mate is actually 6%. So on average, the prediction error is 6% each week. Now, this is really interesting because we saw that 89% of the bookings are actually baseline bookings and only 11% are marketing. And it actually nailed that like 11% pretty close. It has 90.4% are baseline instead of 89. But that is really close for this type of work. But where it gets crushed is in the attribution. You can see it gives 6.7% to search and 3.0 to social and 0, 0, 0 for the other three channels. And if you recall what we just discussed, social should be about 2.5%. Video is actually the highest. That should be 2.8%, but it's getting flagged at zero. Uh, search was 2%, but here we gave it 67 And affiliates should have been 1.4 and display 1.8. And again, those were given zero by this model. And if you look at the ROI estimates, this is showing uh, search with this incredible ROI of over six, uh, that social has a great ROI of about 3.5, but then the others have zero. Okay, so why is this dangerous? Well, imagine taking these model results and going to your stakeholders, going to a head of marketing and saying, look how good, 
Look how good search and social are. We should be putting all this money into search and social, taking it out of video, taking it out of display, taking it out of affiliate marketing, when in actuality, we'd be taking money out of our very best channel, which in this case was video. So this problem is not just relegated to marketing mix models, though marketing mix models definitely have this problem where they appear to solve these problems and these very difficult questions when there is endogeneity uh, in advertising spend, when there is multicollinearity across the channels. And I think they really oversell the effectiveness of marketing mix models. But there are other models too. Uh, the causal impact package also from Google is something that in the wrong hands, it can just seem so confident. It's basically a way of doing synthetic controls. But if you don't really know how to use it and to validate some of the assumptions, like you could be getting answers that look like they're great and are just absolutely incorrect. And final thought, I think you guys should be familiar with these concepts. Marketing mixed models are highly sought after in the industry. They're getting more and more popular, but you should also be comfortable talking about uh, its shortcomings and the need to basically triangulate information, triangulate data points from uh, geo experiments, other like household level or individual level experiments, as well as marketing mix models. You put them all together, you get a sense, but you don't want to be overconfident in the results from these models.